Palm is still going to provide you with the speed boost. Doubling up on that, it's a very strong wave control lane. You've got a lot of clear. King's a great sivir. But give him the arrow, give him the engage tool. Let Hecarim follow it up. Actually give them a primary source of going in, or just take it away. Yeah, just ban it straight up as Jackson and Elise are taken away by the Chiefs. The Ash, of course, the only ban so far for Legacy. Already mixing it up here in the Chiefs. Is Elise already off the table? Trundle banned away as well. Yeah, and the Jin was taken away last time as a reminder by Legacy, but with these two targeted bans and Vladimir still on the board, some respect will have to be shown sooner or later. We know Swiffer can play it. Damn right, Fiora are going to be banned. <laughs> Watching his stream recently has been playing a bit of Hecarim. He does like the Hecarim, as does Carbon. So both of these players have put in the time to learn it. Yeah. And understand how good it is. Shen Hecarim, similar to Shen Olaf we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Where you can get straight into the carries. In this case, it would actually be the Jin, And just kill him. Because you can't die, but you do a lot of damage. Damn right. We'll see whether they are going to be able to lock that one down. And I really love these last two picks because you have a look at having a tank, especially like a Shen there towards the top side of the map, doesn't offer a heck of a lot of damage. We saw Triple playing Zillion. That is massive AoE damage, especially if you have relatively squishy members. I mean, that's huge chunks with those bombs. Not to mention Twitch, who will be ripping apart these members of Legacy's squad. Mm -hmm. If you ever need damage... They're almost the perfect two champions to pick up, especially in an AoE sense. Yeah, you look at how a team fight would break down, you would imagine the Zillion bombs on top of the Twitch yeah. would then be keeping him alive from the Aurelia. And honestly, just a very cerebral draft from the Chiefs. Well, we'll see how it does work. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to hear from you. Use the hashtag CHFWIN. If you think the Chiefs are able to close this one out 2-0, or you believe in the Legacy Legion, the Comeback Kings, use that hashtag LGCWIN. Show them your support, and they're going to need it now. It's looking very scary. However, they do have a lot of tools. They've got the Rek'Sai priority pick now. They do have the Azir there in the mid lane for that late game insurance. Yeah. Lots of wave clear as well. So a lot of powerful options here. And the Jin was banned for a reason in game number one and can yeah. start things up. Yeah, definitely. Long range engage tool, something that Jin can absolutely provide. You couple that with the Soraka, and there are very few avenues to actually kill that Jin with all the sustain that's there. Tally and Carbon do have to be pretty big and actually killing Raid Air. Because if you don't kill Raid Air, Raid Air kills you. Choose can put a wall up, but it only lasts three seconds and it only uh, deters the front line of the Chiefs. That backline damage is still present. Well, Legacy moving up as a five-man unit here. To once again, try and get down a lot of poke. Kuden takes the double tap from the Mantry Q and the bomb spread him, boys. Okay, there we are, Tally. Just gonna separate himself, takes the bomb by himself. 
Mm -hmm. Legacy, of course, still invading. Note that Spooks and Swiper have responded on the flip side. I have placed Vision, albeit not that deep, as Ejim's just going to make some bank anyway. And we are even out to a situation where I think the Soraka Jin wants a standard. They might not. You can see Twitch already on the bottom side of the map here. Means that he will al already be available. Looks like Ejim might just wait this one out. So that everyone is going to be blind. And you can walk down the middle lane. King's actually going to be quite slow at this. He's not with the wave when it crashes. And he can't pick. He's going to have to make a blind assessment. Yeah, as the wards are going to go down. So they spot that Aurelia is moving towards the top side of the map. And that's when Ejim decides, yep, head and bottom lane. Standard lanes are going to ensue. Yeah, so we get ourselves the 2v2. And King and Kuden taking on Raider and Ejim. Twitch in a lane that he may not want to be in. But with Ejim to carry the brunt of the lane control, it should be fine to compensate what is a lack of control from a Soraka in general. Radiant taking a fair bit of damage from that bouncing grenade. Good skin as well for King. Yeah, I like it. More telegraphed ultimate for High Noon. Actually has an end animation. Yep. Taking a bit of damage, but will be able to heal himself up with that Star Call. Assuming he can hit it. And very passive generally bottom lane here. King wants to scale, get his items. Have the mid-game armor penetration built. Yep. Probably see the Ghost Blade into either Moor or Dusk Blade once again. It means that the early pace of this game could be quite dangerous, but if they coincide with Ghost Blade timing, the Greater goes towards one also, then realistically, both teams will be strong at the same points again. It comes down to how you get there, and if Spooks and Carbon duke it out, and if Spooks can actually get ahead once more. And we are going to check in with the mid lane here as well, as Swiffer has his wave pushed up towards him. Chews farming out very nicely right now. Double bombs are going to get rid of that wave. He's only one behind as the dust settles. On the top side of the map, Tally is actually farming out very, very well. As you can see, Swiper will pick up a fair bit. Tally gets himself taunted up. Blade surges onto Swiper, eats up his shield. Yeah, you won't see a lot of action between these two again. The purpose of the Shen is to defuse Tally. There's a possibility that you can gank it. Where the heck are See what they decide to lose Ejim. Shields himself before he gets grenaded to the face. Chiefs out of a bit of control here towards the bottom side of the map. Legacy now moving up. Grab some vision for themselves. Chiefs hold this one where they can feel comfortable and safe. Yeah, the ward's already placed though by Legacy, so they'll see the heck room if he comes and spooks. Knowing that, you could see the question mark ping on that mini map earlier. Yep. He just goes back to base, probably swapped to the other side of the map. And this is a very slow beginning to what is a standard lanes game. And it all comes down to me in that middle game stage. If Swiper can keep people alive, especially once he ticks six. Both mid laners running teleport means we'll end up with 5v5's bottom pretty early. And you can see Swiffer gets flashed on here in the mid lane as Juice is going to turn up. Doesn't have his ultimate available as Swiffer holds onto that flash. That is very Juice ballsy. As my god, that's some damage out of the red buff Hecarim. Still looking for more. The Ghost is down as Carbon's taking a whole bunch of hurt. Hmm. Spooks needs to be respected. Yeah, he does. And the thing is, Swiffer still had full mana at the end of that where the... Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, Swiper going toe-to-toe -to -toe here with Tally. Flashes, but doesn't get it. Nice strike, to back, though. Yeah. The simultaneous flashes means the Tally whilst he's alive. This should be an obvious bait, honestly, if he stays. One taunt, Tally could be in trouble. Warple Blade will be there as Carbon does know that Spooks is coming. Doesn't have level 6 just yet. The knockup comes down onto Spooks. But no one's taking the turret aggro just yet. Tally using that hidden style, keeping himself healthy. Survives for the moment. Yeah, he's back to full health, so he actually could hang around if he wanted to. Doesn't need to recall, though you can feel that compulsion towards it. People sometimes feign their recalls. They just press it out of habit because they know they're not safe. Doesn't actually want to. As still, that was the jungle is actually showing some presence on the map and yep. very evenly matched, all things considered. Except that Hecarim has a slight CS advantage. Just both of them diffusing. Sorry, Rek, sorry. As well, you know, answering, counter ganking, and everything coming out even. Legacy ahead by about 200 gold at the moment, but 
And that's nothing. Just a bit of CS across the board. Four extra for Carbon. Ooh, Rex I farm very nicely. Yeah, well, I'm just super slow. I just want to be patient. If you think about how game one went for Legacy, they slowly imploded in comparison to that of the Chiefs, who slowly ran away with it. Yep. And this pace, given game one's outcome, might favor the Chiefs. We'll see whether they can do the same thing, because it's a very different situation. It's not like, you know, that beautiful allow if it countering the composition or anything like that. Is there something that we should look at on that sort of scoreline, Rusty? I still think we're looking towards the Hecarim, but the answer is definitely there once again from Legacy. Azir, if he can get rolling, we'll have a good time. Yep. And they're also reasonably high range champions. So the last time we saw that Zillion, he was getting into the Ash, getting into the backline with his damage. But Varus was also high range, so it comes down to how they execute, honestly, how they set up. If Legacy can place better vision, perhaps. Ooh, they can get that one down as Swiffer looking for a double bomb onto Carbon. Gets it over the top, but Carbon will have to walk through this. Avoids the damage from the bombs. Spooks is going to wow. come around. Nice level advantage here from Carbon, who's been farming up very effectively. Tunnel going to get eaten. And the groovy old Zillion going to wander back towards this blue bar. We got it. Yeah, got the ward as well. So right now, Spooks is six. Thank oh. you to the Zillion. Carbon may not know that. Does steal away a little Sentinel. That is a big deal. They should still get this blue buff. Carbon might just force the Smite, worst case scenario, but he backs away. And there you go. That was a small little push in there from Legacy. They're starting to get their eye in on opportunities. Carbon, the aggressor, actually executed that counter well. Yeah. Carbon definitely on form right now as Ejim with a nice shield. Stops that grenade damage. Staying ahead is Radio in this lane as Spooks He's has ghosted. already popped the ghost. Yeah, Tally not going to be able to get any auto attacks down here. The Onslaught of Shadows is available but doesn't get the fear as Transcendent Blades is flying through. Spooks has to be careful and Swiper will need to land the God Spooks Taunt to save trouble. his jungler. There's the knock up. The ultimate comes in. Swiper who just switch positions and they both survive for now. They actually get out alive. Very well done from Swiper in particular. Spooks goes in with half health, and that was deep. Swiper actually needs to back away. He has to be very careful. Those minions could have crashed from Tally, but instead they look towards the Rift Herald, it seems. Pick up that objective for the back pocket of an Aurelia you'd be quite content with. Definitely would. Choose thinking about heading back. This is still entirely Carbon and yeah. Spooks meeting each other. This time around it was Spooks being forward, finding that position, but Carbon was there. And they're not even Sightstone junglers this time around. It's entirely intuitive. I'm imagining Carbon and Spooks just pinging the map exactly where each other are, despite vision. These Funny, guys, as you course. said that, there was literally a ping on the Carbon. <laughs> yeah. Nice double bomb comes out from Swiffer as Choose will take a fair bit of damage from this. And they actually decide to head back. Teleport nearly off cooldown. Needs items. Blasting one actually locked in by Swiffer means that he has damage, but not a lot of mana and health. He's going towards that Rod of Ages build. Whereas Choose actually going straight towards Nash's tooth is not going to have resistances of any kind himself. Carbon just really wanted to get stunned. Yeah, he did. He came. Oh no, he chose the wrong minion. He's not a mid laner. No, he got, got annoyed at it as well. Just pray sort. Oh, there's another blue buff actually falling over. And that's lane control. Yeah. And Swiffer then had forcing Choose to back means that they get that buff. King also respecting that fact that they were at blue buff and hangs around, gets zoned from a couple of minions. And just like that, has to go back himself. There's nothing big to be seen here for either of these teams with the small advantages that they're eking out further and further. Benefiting that bottom lane by saying it's a raw 2v2. And Radir, not bad. Yeah, you can see Swiper now with a completely different style on this Shen. I can understand why it has been banned away though, just because it just does look immovable towards the top side. I really like the way that the Chiefs actually drafted that. So they banned the Jax and the Fiora. Yeah. They proved that they have the counter options as well to an Alawi, but they even first picked the Shen. And they said, come at me with the Aurelia. That's probably what you're going to go towards now that we've banned Fiora and Jax. They already had the Shen ready for it. And as a first pick, essentially a counter pick through that first rotation of their draft was very well done. The coaching of Chiefs. Intelligent play across the board here. You can see Swiffer catching up in farm. 
here in the mid lane now that his bombs can destroy the back line as Spooks lying in wait. We've all seen Sleepy Hollow. We understand how this one ends, potentially. Oh, There's the in. flash from Ejim King. Can't get out of the way of the tether as he gets launched back into Radiant. First Blood comes in from Swiper as Putin's in trouble as well. The Contaminates there. Radiant picks one up, but Spooks gonna get locked down. Choose with a lot of damage as Tally's come in as well. Swiper needs to try and save his support player as now the medic has truly arrived. Swiper's here. Choose. Very low right now as the knockup comes in on Swiper. They're not done. Did no ultimate to be held as Carbon in so much trouble. Swiper just picks it up. This is a battle, Shen, right now. Yeah, he is absolutely battling them. And the reason he goes so forward is because Swiffer has the ultimate. Defensive position to teleport to is the only unfortunate factor there for the Chief. Swiffer did not arrive on time. But better late than never. Is there to help lock down the back end of that fight. That was Choo Choo's actually going off. Yeah. The big ultimate kicks it off after they find Kick. And with the AD carry being immediately taken out, this is what helps. They lock Raid Air down, I believe. It's, nope, it's the, uh, Raid Air flashed. So it looked like he got locked down. Carbon comes in right on time with Tally. And you can see where Swift was teleported to and how late it was. That's the only unfortunate thing. But Swiper's immediate response is just go. Swiffer has the ultimate. You're safe. Continue to look for these picks and take people out. Does a lot of damage every time that sword goes through them. Oh, yeah. Really good stuff from the Shen. Once again, another snare comes in from Ajim, but in these long trades, definitely works out for Legacy. Spooks is hiding. Yeah. He's on a pink ward. Yeah, he moved. There you go. You can see Shen's coming down as well. Carbon in potential trouble right now as the bombs, they're still looking for them. No Emperor's Divide here for Choose. It's very, very close, though. Carbon is just committing to this. They want that Tally blue. is there. Oh, Swiffer was looking for the double bomb. Actually lands one onto Choo Choo's there. What have they just completed? Doesn't have a lot of mana as Swiper's going to make his way over and Carbon going to steal the blue buff successfully. Knockup comes in, but Spooks is here as well. There's the Chilling Smite. Carbon might just die here. The ultimate is available. Onslaught of Shadows is there for Spooks. Nice. Oh, just ults himself out, and Spooks didn't want to ult. And there's a tunnel that was prepared earlier by him. Beautiful. I don't know if Spooks had it. I'm assuming that is it available, yeah. Yeah, he did. Just ults not into using it. Perhaps he assumed Carbon had Flash. Either way, just didn't want it. Still well done from Carbon to get himself out. Damn right. See Jim protecting his pink board, which will regen, of course. Mm-hmm. Kuden showing respect. King and Kuden, not exactly in the best position right now, but they will always be relevant past this point of laning. Once we see them rotate around the map, look towards mid lane. And funnily enough, these are the two AD carriers that can do that. Twitch yeah. can submarine his way in. Jin can sit back and throw the ultimate. You can see Tally as well. He's got a lot of corruption charged up. Trinity Force is there, and he got a lot out of that teleport to the bottom lane. Maybe not as much as Swiper. Managed to grab 2-0-1. His teleport is, of course, still off cooldown. Swiffing out, considering a back. We'll see what he decides to pick up, whether it's going to be those boots, so he can get those bombs in the better positions. And at 15 minutes into this second game, Legacy are looking a lot better than game number one. Oh, definitely. Carbon controlling the pace of the jungle. Holding the Hecarim down, but speaking of, they're back in bottom. Oh my goodness, the ultimate coming out from Swiper. Chiefs play these Shen comps so well. I mean, be it Ejim or, of course, Swiper. We remember the Shen Rise combination they used. That was disgusting. This is the same thing as the Ash combo, but with another person initiating. And so what they do this time is every time Shen has ulti, they actually might want Swiper here. No. Yeah, gets a double taunt down as no. well as the auto attacks aren't going to be hitting. Wish comes in to try and save these legacy members, and that's a lot of burst. Tally does take down Swiper, who wasn't expecting that amount of damage. That was a lot of damage from Tally just then. They should push this lane, actually. Swiffer, no teleport, no one there to stop it. And even Soraka's up there. The Wambulance. Yeah. Made away top. Radius now mid, and Choose has no health to his name. Yeah, in goes Radius, pops the ultimate as the Emperor's Divide. That ain't going to do it. As Tally teleports in half health, but the damage has been done. Mid lane are gone. Carbon's going to finish the turret, so they at least get that. That is the first one on the board. As Carbon shoots himself to the aid of his team. And wow, Tally, Tally picks one up. Massive 
here on the back end. No stun comes in for Swiffer. As Tally not going to explode to death from that one. Kudan, the Wambulance, as you say, just runs after Tally. Heals him back up. And that is a big defense for Legacy. Five to five right now, and Legacy have the lead. And that's exactly what we expect from King on this gin as well. It hit the point in the game where he's able to rotate towards mid. Yes, the Chiefs put it into effect, but doesn't mean that the Jin won't excel doing it. Tally's popping off. He is. There's a cute little taunt. As the Equilibrium Strike is going to keep Swiffer down. Starkle comes in. Swiffer going to save his mid lane turret. Now you can see Tally split pushing on the bottom side of the map. Radia almost with that ultimate back off cooldown again. Heading towards that lane. Yeah, so choose no teleport. I believe he actually used that to go bottom for this. He's about to find himself next to Radar on this Twitch. He has invisibility, so backs away smartly with timing and legacy now. They're ahead in gold. Looking really solid besides that AD carry position, which was solid in game one. But there's no answer to that if you're king. You just have to watch yourself dunk. Oh, nice dunk comes in as Kudan taking a lot of damage. She is the priority target. We'll share it with Carbon just a little bit. Spook steals away Raptor Camp. Heading back to base is the Soraka. Actually decides not to. He's now Ejim and Radiant pushing on to choose on the bottom side of the map. Ultimate is of course there. Blade of the Room King done for Radiant as well. Yeah. This guy's big. And they've kept Choo Choo's near the bottom area, which means Carbon's actually the recipient of a lot of these side lane farms. We saw him get the top lane turret solo gold as well. That's not ideal for the side of Legacy. You would definitely want that solo gold to go to Tally, perhaps. But his teleport pays off. Now in a position potentially of absolute power. Tally's massive. The problem still remains, however, where Shen can order Hecarim, who can go in at super speed at the same time as a submarine Twitch. Yeah. and kill the AD carry in support of Legacy. What they are yet to do is break the turret doing this. Well, in goes Radia. Actually not going to be able to get Kudan and King. He was hiding. He was certainly hiding. I made that very clear. But they've got so many different Shen delivery methods. I mean, you can have Suicide Swiffer go in and die, have his ultimate, so Swipe is definitely going to be there. you got the Submarine Twitch who goes in. Yeah, the reason I actually say Submarine Twitch is because the Shen ult is invisible. Yeah. When the Twitch is invisible. Precisely. So you can be next to them suddenly and just be like, hello. Hi, I'm a Shen. So he wants to be able to clear out this ward. Choose and Carbon are right there as he just jumps straight on top of it. That's actually the most frustrating thing a hacker can do. If you stand next to a wall with super speed, the distance you cover away from that ward is very funny. It's a bit silly. Delivers some more experience to Spooks. Hecarim's a champion that likes a few levels as well. He does, and level 11's a big one. Something that Carbon doesn't get. Oh, nice steal there from Spooks as well. And still a very lane heavy game. We're 19 minutes in, and the bottom lane is still essentially a 2v2. And the gold difference here between these two teams is approximately that one turret that Legacy have taken. Yeah. It is mostly through the top laner, however, and the jungle roll. Yeah. Even the mid laner's got a slight advantage, but the deficit that Radir has given to King and Kuden makes up for that entirely. And it's funny, we're watching a meta where AD carries generally not the hyper carries, they're actually the facilitators, but Twitch can always pop up here and there. And when, I guess, the rest of the map is performing equally, the AD carries then sort of start to shine, I guess. The rule of thumb, and this is actually like yes and no, right? Raider, he'll rock up into a team fight feeling good about himself, you know? Oh, yeah. Currently 3 2 1. Got my items, got a bit more farm than an AD carry. I can carry. And then oh, Aurelia, Aurelia has a Trinity Force. She's like, what up? You're dead. Yeah. That's actually just how it goes. This time around, though, note that there is a Zillion, there is a Karma, and there is a Shen. So they have found a way to potentially have a protect the Twitch type of comp. It's just a bit hard mode right now. Yeah, because if they actually catch the Twitch out, not a lot of shields would save it. Well, Chiefs now just shove this wave into the turret. Buy themselves a back. We'll see what items do come out here, whether Radiant can complete that Renan's Hurricane. Oh my god, there's another Ocean Drake. Oh my goodness. Maybe the second for the Chiefs. Yeah, it has been a damp dragon situation here in this series. There's been a lot of oceans. Yeah, that's the fifth. The fifth. You can name him Frank. 
Frank Ocean. Oh, damn it. I didn't actually know that that was it until I said it, and then I got the joke, and then I felt bad. That's uncomfortable. Is Swiffer, once again, delivering some experience to Spooks, grabs himself a level 12. This dragon up in 18 seconds. It's now the Chief's turn to get some vision around the area. Oh, they didn't quite see that ward. Is there it is. He's not going to... Oh, oh yeah. there it is. All right. So the Chiefs have established control of the Dragon Pit area. They're even now advancing those wards to ensure they can see Legacy, who you would expect with two teleports up can look to contest this, if nothing else. Dependent on Chu's current gold that he's sitting on, may want to recall and utilize having boots. Yep. But we'll see how he plays this one out. Because the first step is always to have vision. You need to have side wave control. You need to be ready to fight and have good teleport wards. And at this stage, you know, you just put, poke out spooks. That'll work. Yeah, at this stage, they both have that. You can see good defensive vision here from the Chiefs, but Legacy know exactly where Spooks is. See Jim moving around. Twitch not going to be stealthing up, but does have his Hurricane. There are two item spikes sort of across the Kicked board here for the Chiefs, but also for Legacy. Carbon's going to poke his head around. He's taking a fair bit of damage as Radio is going to reveal himself. Tally with the teleport. Choose with the teleport. They push them off a little bit. The control of this dragon is entirely neutral. And it's hitting everybody angrily, just not understanding why people are hitting it. Yeah, it's pretty upset. It'll go back to the pit, but the Chiefs and Legacy teams are still around this area. One thing we didn't note as Radio is now looking. Oh, wow. There it is. King is going to be the one aggressed on as the ultimate goes down. Nice Shadow Dash comes in, but look at all the healing. It's not enough, though, as Chooz is going to teleport in. Swipe of the big tank in the front line as Tally makes his way in the back. The Choose. ultimate comes down from Swiffer. Nicely done, but he's not able to save Egym. Swiper in trouble. Double kill comes out as Tally's so big. Radium melts. It's a triple. Spooks is going to die. It's almost a quadra, but Carbon takes it away, and Swiffer says, well, that didn't work out very well. Yeah, he does. Legacy get a big team fight. They find themselves pretty far ahead, honestly, on the back of that. Four people dead and only Swiffer left. Juju's is playing, as far as the team fight is concerned, so much better than this game number one. This is exactly the polari polarizing nature, the mid lane of legacy that we've come to know in this split. Tally is 6-0-3. What more can you say? Welcome back to the team. Yeah, damn right. This guy is huge. And he's only going to get more and more difficult to deal with from here. He's taking down this outer turret in the mid lane on his own as Ejim wants to snare him up. But yeah, you run away. This Aurelia is not messing around and the outer turret falls. Let's have a look at that fight again. And this is actually kicked off by Radar and Swiper. Funny thing is that shield is actually not that big of a deal. It's more so just to get Swiper into the fight. So they find King and with King dead, Chuchu's even making a mistake with that Q. It's the fact that Carbon gets a three-man knockup. Chuchu's is actually two soldiers strong on top of that position, and Tally gets in. Raider's like, oh, an opportunity dies within a second, and Spook saves the ultimate for an awful long time. And just like that, it was actually very well executed from Legacy. Yeah, an eradication of the Chiefs. Feels like teleport timing as well from Swiffer was a little bit lacking. Did make it into, I guess, get the Twitch back up, but I mean, he was already out of position. He got the back end of the fight quite well, but because three people are being knocked up also, you can only save one. It's difficult. And this is the problem, once again, that Twitch can present. Welcome to the meta. Yeah. It's also the fact that Legacy have now taken out three of these outer turrets. It's getting more and more difficult for the Chiefs to be able to push towards this, just because everything is so large. All of the distances they need to cover in dangerous territory. It's difficult to get to these. Well, the cool thing I was going to say earlier as well is actually the um, Rek'Sai in Twitch. Rek'Sai was early rotated and can spot Twitch with the tremor sensors constantly. Yeah, true. Even if you're invisible and Carbon's nearby, if he's spotting the flank, he will actually see you walking around. They have got Radir. Yeah, they're looking for a nice equilibrium strike immediately there as Tally gets right on top of Radir. You can see four people though, Tally. You ain't going to survive that one as Almost. the shutdown comes in. Almost survived. Kudan actually had his ultimate. Didn't use it. Swiffer. Yeah, looking for Kudan. Doesn't get the stun as Swiffer has the ult on himself. But Prox as well as Carbon might be in trouble. Chu's getting a lot of damage down right here as there's the Emperor's Divide. But Spooks able to take down Carbon. King 
with massive damage on the back oh, end of Swiffer. Swiffer. Yeah, gets a massive stun, but Choose, perfectly timed Flash, is going to kill Swiper with the help of King. It's a three for two in favor of Legacy in the end. And it took a long time to kill Tally, let's be fair. And this is the second time now that we've seen Legacy win a team fight with a member missing from essentially the start of it. They still somehow get these sick engages, and it's on the back of Carbon being a super tank. Choo Choo's doing ridiculous amounts of damage, and this time around, King to back them up, sitting so far distance that they can't get on top of him. This is all where it kicks off. Of course, they find Tally. Look how close Kooten was, even with his ult up. Probably could have saved him. The thing is, they accelerate past this point, and Choo's just stands still and delivers. Swiffer has to early blow the ultimate on himself. That's what you want to do against Zillion, because it takes so long to kill Carbon. Bam, one, two, punch, easy. Swiper thinks he can do more than he could. And this is where they turn it around. Fantastic flash once again. The Dusk Blade locks up that second. Yeah, I actually have a feeling that if Swiper had nailed that Shadow Dash instead of it being flashed and, of course, avoided by King, it could have been a different story. But as, as it stands, the Chief's falling further and further behind. It's approximately 5,000 gold the lead, or exactly, depending on where you want to go with it. This is just the night and day yeah. legacy. Game one and two, entirely different teams. King was the only person firing in game number one. The Rumble just never had an opportunity. The junglers kind of just met each other, but the opposite thing to this game happened. And they picked level, on Choo Choo's. That's a level 16 tally as well. This guy is so big. Almost, he's exactly 80 CS in the lead. As Carbon Ooh. looks for the flash knockup, but doesn't get it. As Ejim dodging out of the way of some bolts, but he's going to get hit by the last three. Spooks avoids one of them for Ejim. Raider is invisible, and there's four here. Yeah, Swiffer does get the stun onto Carbon there as well. He flashes out of the way. Will get some damage onto King. No, he doesn't. The so shield comes in from the lock of the Iron Solari. Legacy aren't done, though. They have an advantage. They're trying to push it. Yeah, Swift is going to make his way over. He's in trouble. Uses the ultimate. Will survive now, but look at all the Sand Soldiers set up. Swiffer flashes over, looks for the stun, but doesn't get it. King takes a lot of damage. Stands on two bombs as Swiper looking for it, but doesn't get it in there either. Oh my goodness, this is so dangerous. Oh, so many bombs, though. Yeah. So many heals. This Tally's going to be able to take down this turret. It's a very different story. Last game it was Swiper, the immovable object, but now it's Tally who has to be responded to. He's ATCS ahead as well. Swiper is essentially nothing now to Tally. And the strategy that they had, the utilization of this Shen getting into the bottom lane time and again, means that they gave so many avenues for Tally not only to farm and control minion waves, but to counter gank with that teleport. And because that was successful, this guy is now unbelievably large. And that item completion that he just had cements oh that my fact. God, Blade of the Wrong King done now for Tally. Raider's worst nightmare is now online. Oh yeah. Void stuff done for Swiffer, so he's got three items. Infinity Edge almo almost done for Radio, but that's almost irrelevant. Irrelevant. event. As Tally's just what? going to three shot him. Unless now. the Chiefs play immaculately. And what's Very cool as well is that, like, yeah, Radio was a little bit ahead in laning phase, and that's something that they were working towards the Chiefs. It was a part of their plan. The way that that backfires is simply because King's always relevant. He's running a mid-game build, and Legacy are winning mid-game fights. So he's still accelerated even if they lose them. Yeah. Or lose him early in them. And now he can press R. And with his double armor penetration, about to be Infinity Edge with it, he's still relevant with just his R and W. Choose able to long-range poke people means that it's a threat that people are flashing. You don't want to get trapped. He's probably going to be able to take down this Cloud Drake on his own. Spooks. I think watered it. Well, he could have chucked one over the side there, but decides not to. He doesn't actually have one. So Tally going to be able to take this one himself. The rest of Legacy on the top side of the map. Tally does have teleport in order to respond to this. And Spooks, he's going to make his way over. Massive damage there. As Jin steals that away. 1300 crit before his Infinity Edge is done. Jesus. And you pop the Ghost Blade dual crit for even more because of the attack speed bonus. And I'm sure King has enough money now. He was sitting in that top lane for a while and he'd want to recall. But with Tally so far ahead. Getting aggressive on the Swiper. He'll still have the Shadow Dash, the shield there, and his scalpel. Didn't even go for like a wit's end attack speed build either. Just straight into a blade to kill Swiper, who's stacking that health. Oh, he's underneath the turret now. Transcendent Blades come in. He flashes, and Tally gets the 1v1 under the turret. He's now in the base, which is a bit Swift of a problem. Here. 
But that means there's a mismatch on the other side. Swift is going to have to land the bombs, otherwise he might fall to the same fate. He just ran away. Legacy start off the Baron. To be fair, Swiffer had teleport, but because he's gone, Telly may want to recall to teleport in. He won't be here on time if they keep doing it this quickly. Baron is going to get drawn off as King taking a lot of damage. Decent positioning from Radier as Swiffer does fall down, but the ultimate's available. King off to the side. Kuta is in. going to fall. Big shield, but Tally is able to pick one up. Spooks. No, Egypt's oh going to be the next God. one. That burst damage is ballistic as Swiffer pushed over the wall. Big bomb damage is going to come in as all oh, oh, this may kill have him. killed him. <laughs> oh god, that was close. King though picked it up with a deadly flourish and Legacy now going to take down the Baron. Six to seven thousand gold in the lead. And this will only solidify a further advantage for this team as they push forward. And Legacy plays the Chiefs. There's just something in the air. And with this lead, with the Baron buff, with the team composition, a 9, 1 and 3 Aurelia, doesn't even look like Tally's out of practice. Damn right Man, it he's so on form, it's ridiculous. They could look to close this one out now with the lead that they have. Still yet to actually pull the trigger on that given they need to recall first, but all of the makings now there. We'll see how they decide to do it as well, whether it be that 4-1 that they have been going for with Tally moving towards the bottom side. There's no teleport actually for Tally. I might imagine that they work mid and bottom if they're going to do a 4-1 so that it's close to a rotation. Yep. If they don't do that, then they would absolutely have Choo Choo's in a side lane because he has the teleport, but they need him in these fights. It's a very delicate situation when your top laner doesn't have that TP. With the Baron buff, though, they should be able to brute force their way in. Super. Throwing down some bombs here. Going to struggle with these super creeps. See the wave clear now put to the test of the Chiefs roster. And Soraka actually just causing nightmares. Refusing all of the poke that Swift has been putting down. You can't just have one member fed on the team. Raider has to do his part, and they just kill him. Does at least now have an executioner's calling going towards that mortal reminder. As you can see, it is the 4-1. Up towards the top side, though, is Radio looking to submarine in. They know that there's no teleport. Can he this find it? Yeah, the ultimate is available. King going to get bursted out first. The Emperor's Divide is there. Swiper gets in, but my god, the burst damage out of this Azir is ridiculous. The ultimate's on. It's going to wear off, though. As they just give they're up. They're winning this and they're still Swiper. pushing this bottom. Is ridiculous. Yeah, the inhibitor's falling down. Carbon gets a nice knock up as Spooks wants to get Kuhn and finds him as the ultimate comes down. Choose in trouble. The bombs are there. Shutdown comes in as this horse is going nuts. Inhibitor's still falling down though. Tally's not done. This could actually be a push onto the Nexus. Carbon's job is to stop recalls. See whether he can get there as Spooks he trying to play both. defense. Exactly right. But can the Zillion actually do anything right now? Tally will turn it. Yeah, he yeah. will. Nice slow comes in, lands one of the bombs. Later of the Rune King gets him that speed up. Nice snare comes out. Swiffer does have the ultimate available one more time. Picks up his own bomb and <laughs> runs the hell back to base. Really well timed from Tally also on that Aurelia to get out at the same time as Twitch is spawning. So Legacy with the communication. They don't exactly win the team fight, but they get an inhibitor for it. So it's an end result, big win. For Legacy, now the base is broken. They can continue this onslaught. The Baron buff hasn't completely run out. Carbon's got it, Tally's got it. Yeah. I mean, in the end of the day, it's just Legacy doing the same thing as the Chiefs, taking incremental advantages from every situation from about the same point in the game. It's almost like we're just seeing mirrors from the other side as now the teleport play. Swiffer is able oh, to partially geez. get out of the way, but a big Empress divide. Swiffer ults himself up. Tally is going to find his way once again into the back line. He uses a lot of his cooldowns, though, as the bomb sitting on top of him. In goes Spooks, but the damage is huge from Legacy and Choose. Picks one up. Carbon, massive in the front line. Ejim going to mount it to triple kill already for Tally. And Legacy lose no one and take three. Yeah, honestly, Tally may have been 9 1 and 3, but Choo Choo's has been the secret MVP in this game as well. Kuden's heals have been diffusing a lot of the pressure as Choo's is going to take the turret. Yeah, fun. Legacy, they are now over 10,000 gold ahead in this second game at 35 minutes, and the slow style no longer needs to be there. They can accelerate this game, and they absolutely are. Yeah, Tally just taking down the mid lane in a turret. Top lane falls as well as Swiffer. Oh my god. Yeah, doesn't even have time to use the ultimate there as Swiper gets underneath the turret. But is he safe there? I'm not entirely sure. This King has so much upfront damage. 
No such thing as safe anymore. Legacy have broken the base in all three lanes. They don't have a whole lot of time where it'll be a 4v5. But 40 seconds without Swiffer, they could still look towards this. They are strong. And Swiffer is such a big part of their comp here as well. A Swiper looking to try and start it up. But he's supposed to be the big burly tank and here King go. just tears him apart with the help of the rest of the team. Nexus turret one falls down. Empress Divide gets Spooks out. Choo Choo's playing fantastically. Spooks just a bit of a drive by here on the horse as the Nexus turrets fall. Tally, eyes set on the Nexus. As this Aurelia was unbelievable this game. Nine, one and six. Welcome back, Mr. Tally. Feels like a complete turnaround from game oh, yeah. number one. King and Kudan, they got camped. They got killed a few times, but it didn't actually matter because the strong side of the map is not the bottom lane. And Choo Choo's Carbon and Tallywacker as a three-man unit did work. So much work, but we're going to throw it back to the analyst desk to break down the legacy win. Thank you so much, Atlas and Rusty. And, you know, in the end, it is a tally, uh, tally and legacy win. But I, I think that... We, we kind of felt it a little bit different. We felt that this was a laning phase that was pro prolonged and that the Chiefs were slowly edging a for, uh, ahead. I mean, Radia had a 30 CS advantage at one point, the Shen completely nullifying the Aurelia. And then Legacy just went back to Legacy-style League of Legends and just for, forced fight after fight after the fight. And some of them were even off the back of Chiefs fights. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the idea is, is that between Game 1 and Game 2, we have very different styles of League of Legends. So Game 1, you have very slow kind of incremental victories, slow chipping, if you will, or... or uh, whittling down of opponents to the Chiefs move around the map. Game two, we said that we want Legacy to play Legacy League of Legends, and they delivered. Tally and Carbon in particular. Carbon getting that fight jungle. I mean, think about his cute little teleport play that he made where he was uh, taking the blue buff, and then he got away by using his Void Rush across map. It's, it's those types of plays that I was expecting Carbon to make. That's where he thrives. And they just ran full fist into Chiefs. On top of that, there was just one big team fight down at the bottom lane where Legacy were able to turn that team fight around, which was looking really good for Chiefs as well when they had a goal lead, and King wasn't able to go back to base yet. And I completely turned it around. It's just Legacy's game from then onwards. Yeah, it certainly is. We actually have one of the team fights available for us. So we're going to pull it up on your screen right now. Before our producer starts this, yep. I want to set up the, the stage. that Because what you're setting the stage for is this idea that Chiefs are ahead on the bottom side of the map. This is where they are powerful. So obviously they want to make a play down here with the Shintel. I don't even like, let's take it a step further. The items aren't available. But right now, he is on a Blade of the Ruined King and a Hurricane. Yep. Mr. King has 3,000 gold that he goes back and spends after this, uh, and he's sitting on a Yomu's Ghost Blade in Boots too. So uh, that, that's, a bit, that's about 3,000 uh, 3, gold in discrepancy. And both junglers knew. Like, everyone was playing around this bottom side of the map. So first and foremost, look at where Spooks is. Raider comes in. The Shin Ultimate goes down. Uh, they're not on Kuden, They're on King. So Kuden is able to make sure that King isn't immediately burst, and it allows long enough for Tally to complete his teleport, kind of get into this back half. And Chiefs have had to overcommit on their positioning. Then, finally, Swiffer and Spooks arrive. So there's two different issues. One was the play itself, like this idea of making a play on the bottom, is correct from the Chiefs. The target selection and the execution is very poor. It should not have been Jin. It should have been Sorok if they were going to try to burst anyone because they didn't get a hold of Kuden. He was able to make sure that Jin stayed alive for those uh, split second long enough so that Tally could get down there. Mm -hmm. And likewise, there needed to be communication with Spooks. He should have been down there waiting, uh, ready for the play. Instead, he was on Raptor camp. On the flip side, the execution to reverse that team fight coming out from Legacy was perfect. Picture perfect. Yeah, yeah, picture yep. perfect from them. The ultimate coming out from Choo Choo's with the flank coming from Tally and Carbon was just pinpoint perfect, you know, right up against the Azir ultimate just to lock them in and take those two kills right off the bat. And speaking of Choo Choo's, from that fight onwards, he had a tr tremendous game on Azir. He was playing the team fights beautifully. Yeah, he certainly did. But Choo Choo's, uh, and I've always said this, is like much better when he can arrive at a team fight, assess his <laughs> situation, and make the correct choice. He actually, when he plays poorly, is when someone forces on top of Choo's and he has to make a reaction replay. At the same time, where uh, Tally and uh, Tim Carbon, I call them from their first name, so much behind the scenes, where Tally and Carbon excel is actually initiating the yep. fight and being those two frontliners. So I, I think that playing as a duo towards the top lane actually suits Choo Choo's more because it gives him the room to be able to make these plays for us. It's the secret formula that Legacy have been missing. It's this idea that um, Choo Choo's, he needs someone to set up the dominoes for him. If you give him the perfect scenario, he'll finish the play. He just won't start the play. Whereas uh, Tally and Legacy, that's what they've been missing. With Minky up in the top side or you know, whatever iteration of top laner that they want to run through their Lega B uh, yeah, tree cooler, guy yep. up there. Uh, 
they just they needed the tally factor. They needed the secret formula, and they finally got it. Well, they certainly do, and they bring us to a 1-1 game. So, guys, after a three-and-a-half-minute break, we're going to actually decide who wins this one for the OPL Legend matches. 1-1. Don't go anywhere. Game three after this break.